should you pull Calabauna or not? All right, so this is a kind of a complicated topic, but I'll try to be as quick as I can. So first of all, do you need a mineral of Flados DPS? If you need it or if you want it and you don't have any other, then I think it's a good idea to pick up Calabauna, even though you, if you argue that Shu is coming and power creeping everyone, uh, even if that might be the case, we don't know yet. We don't know, we don't have the stats. So even if we don't know that yet, it's still gonna be very, very far away. So if you don't want to wait and have mineral flowers uh, missing for the next five months then you should still keep uh, get Cal calabana in my opinion and then when G when chu comes you get chu as well right but as a free to play i understand that if you also want other characters it might not be a good idea to pick up everything you want right you need to pay attention and try to plan accordingly now assuming that you're gonna skip everybody after Calabauna, uh, you can easily afford Calabauna and Chu as a free to play because even though, uh, as, a, as a free to play per patch you get 63, 64 uh, pulls per patch as a free to play. So that's not enough. That's not a lot. And in two patches you still don't even have enough to guarantee a character. So uh, it's understandable that you don't really want to pull for too many characters. Also six or 37, depending on which one you want, is coming, are coming in 1.4, or Spatodia, right? Those characters are kind of are kinda popular, kind of wanted. So it's understandable that you don't want to uh, spend too much considering Chu is coming on Calabauna. So should you pull for Calabauna? If you are free to play and you don't have Eternity and you don't care or you think that it's far enough, Chu, uh, and so you don't really care about that coming, and you are skipping Shamane, 37, 6, Spadodia, and Ezra, then yes. Otherwise, it depends on who do you want from the extra characters. If you want Shamane, then no. If you want 37, then no. If you want 6, maybe you can get them both, but you're not going to have enough to get uh, Chu. So if you're planning on getting Chu or Getian in 1.6, I don't think this is a good idea to get it now. You should just save and use someone else to to clear to clear the <clears throat> the, the content that you need a flat uh, mineral for right you can like cheesy with someone else as long as it's not weak to it it's just an aflatus that you can just use right now that said let's go ahead and try to understand when you want to pick up calabana right so if you're not free to play or if you're free to play you have a lot of pulls and you maybe you got lucky on uh, on, on the previous banners, right? And you have a lot of pulls now, and you're not like, oh no, right? And you're getting Black Dwarf, uh, Calabauna, but you are skipping majority of the characters that are coming in the future, and maybe you're just getting six, for example. In that case, uh, you should pull for Calabauna, and if, even if you have Eternity, and maybe she's like level one because you don't like her, uh, Calabauna does way more damage than Eternity. Eternity is more of a survival character, while uh, she does okay damage, so don't. By no means, I'm saying that you can't clear anything with uh, with Eternity. You can, and it's gonna be fine. Uh, with that, could be a reason why you skip Black Dwarf. But if you don't have anyone, or if you have Eternity and you don't like Eternity, in that case, Calabana is a good option. She does a lot of damage. She's AP greedy though, so uh, you want characters like Pickles, so you can still. Uh, help her while not using many cards because she wants to use all the cards all the time. Now, her insight might sound complicated, but it's not complicated the moment you you get your hands on the characters. And but besides that, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna try and explain to you really quickly uh, what's the what's her, what her kit is about. Basically, you play the cards, you play Enchanted Strike or Mythical Meteors, depending on which one you get. Either you get either Saturn planet or Mars planet. Saturn is the yellow one, gold planet. Mars is the red one. And if when you uh, do the alt, you do the alt, you remove all the planets that you had on you. Uh, the maximum am amount of planets is capped at three. If is if P zero four cap. If you are if you are lucky, and get P one somehow. Okay. Now, when you do the alt, you do damage, you remove the planets, you also gain two stack of full moon, which is the white planet, and full moon gets gives you 6% skill power each stack, so if you get two, that's 12%, and the planets uh, are capped at three. Now, 
all the other cards when you have a planet the, pre the presence of the planet on you also gives you other bonuses as well on top of that on the i1 uh, basically says that when a planet is removed which refers to when you do the alt and you eat the planets gain one stack of saturn divination or Mars or full moon, depending on the type that, it, uh, that the old eight. So if you have two planets of uh, two golden planets and one red planet, you have two Saturn, one Mars. In that case, you have 24% penetration rate and 12% leech rate. Or if you have one Mars, one Saturn and one full moon, now you have plus 2% skill power. 12% 12, 12 leech rate and 12% penetration. So depending on how many you ate, uh, you have one or multiple stacks of those uh, singular planet divination now on the inside three basically it gives you one more attack so depending on the major the majority of the planet that you ate so if saturn was the most eaten planet <clears throat> now after you do the alt you automatically immediately cast enchanted strike if Saturn was the most removed. If Mars was the most removed, you get cast mythical meteors added automatically without using AP. It's like an extra attack, like uh, think about Lilia critting, right? She does like another attack. Basically, that's the same thing, right? But after you, a you eat a planet. So make sure you have at least uh, a majority of a planet going on with you. It's going to be harder to do with a four, with um, with P1, because you have four. So it's harder to, to make it so you have a, more than one planet. But it's not that hard. It just takes a little longer uh, because you, you, need to you need to fill up your, your planet sockets, right? Uh, so if you have, that's Saturn Mars, if you have full moon and it's the most removed planet, now you immediately gain spelling addition two for one or two rounds corresponding to the amount of the full moon removed. So this is not that hard. It's not that complicated in my opinion. So that said, you get a very, very strong character. First of all, uh, she wants to basically go ahead and play a lot of planets boom boom you do your enchanted strike depending on which planet you plan on getting and which buff you plan on getting so saturn is more dps wise uh, dps oriented and mars is more like survival oriented right so depending on which planet you have uh, and which card you have on your in your hand you might get fucked in rng but she wants to do the cycle of attacking getting the ult doing the ult um, uh, eating the planets on the amount of planets that you planned before. Now you have exactly what you need. You eat them, and now you get the car, the, the the bonus that you want, and the uh, follow up attack that you want. And then you continue uh, the, the the cycle is over, and then you continue doing that over and over. So which means that uh, side troop such as um, Luxurious Leisure. That's pretty good because you still go, you keep doing the alt over and over, and you also get <clears throat> more damage, right? So, stuff like that is pretty good. You can also, this is not a guide, uh, but it's, it's better to understand the power of a uh, black dwarf compared to, let's say, eternity, right? So, <clears throat> as you can see, uh, the two characters, okay, they might have the same flatters, but first of all, Eternity is reality and Black Dwarf is uh, mental, so you could also argue that it's not even the same. You could even use them both if you want, depending on which enemy is weak to what type of, uh, of uh, damage, you might freely switch to between, right, without any problems. Uh, that said, I don't think there's uh, anything else that I want to say. I think it's pretty much clear, I think, what she does and now sadly it's up to you to, to decide if with your current roster and your current characters you should or you want to pull black dwarf right in my opinion you should pull for black dwarf uh because she's very she's very strong it doesn't matter that you coming and our power creeps because even if that's the case you still have two characters one is mental as one and one is reality if you have eternity and you like eternity then you don't need to pull for black dwarf uh, you're still fine with Eternity. You don't have to pull for her, uh, especially if you want to pick up future characters, okay? So, that said, uh, let me know if you have other questions. You, you're probably going to have them. Uh, post them in the, in the comments below, and I will try to reply and uh, explain a little more, okay? So, thank you for watching, and see you next time.